where are we going? Yes. This is dead air. Yeah, Dan's looking at his phone, so... <laughs> oh, we're on. Yeah, we're on now. Okay. <laughs> hey, everyone. Welcome to Game Goose. I mean, you've been here for a while. It, that was a true, hey, didn't see you there. Come on in. Uh, today is September 8th, 2020. This is Season three, 3, Episode 6. We have taken quite a break due to illnesses, due to vacations, due to new jobs... It's a just, icky feeling. This is a weird time to be ill. We're all fine. Yes, uh, we're all good now, yeah. but I think Clinton was under the weather, and then Neil was home, and then B was under the weather, and the mm-hmm. whole time I've been super stressed out with work. Um, so we're back, and we're going to talk about some games. Uh, Neil, how are we there in, in New York? We're good. We're fine. We're good and fine. Good and fine. And Clinton in in Lansing, which suddenly decided today's fall. Yeah, no, I decided that a little bit like a week and a half ago i feel like that's but yeah true. That's no true. i'm good i'm good i'm actually like having to go into work now so i feel like somewhat more normal which mm-hmm. is nice it's a nice, nice little return to i don't know some semblance of normalcy it's obviously not normalcy but yeah ever since i started going back to work i've been feeling a lot more normal in yeah. general <laughs> um yeah. so it, it's nice I'm um for this fucking thing to be done <laughs> Which yes, and bad. we're you know it won't be done for a minute, but you know some things are opening back up. Yeah, it, the good thing about in Michigan is we survived like the tourist season while staying pretty level. Yeah, uh, so hopefully we can we can uh, vacation was to Michigan because you can't really go anywhere where people don't know you right now. That's uh, yeah, you know. So I went to people who trusted my bubble and I trusted their bubble, and it was fun to see the difference. Not fun, but it was interesting to see the difference between how New York is handling this and Michigan. Inherently, New York just has to be different because we're so packed together mm-hmm. and we don't have our own cars and our buildings are smaller. Um, yeah. but like I, I ate in a restaurant in Lansing and that felt weird. And I don't necessarily want to be doing that. <laughs> um, it kind of just happened, but uh, yeah, you guys are doing great as far as I can see. Yeah. It's the biggest gatherings we have are people protesting that you can't have gatherings. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, from time to time you get your, you know, and the colleges that are starting to go back, but I don't think that's going to last much longer. Nope. Um, so uh, before we get started, just a little bit, uh, I know we, we kind of gone away from the news, but um, I'm not, I, I know Neil saw, I don't know if you saw Clinton, last night the Xbox Series S leaked, which is an all digital version of the Xbox Series X, and so this morning Microsoft decided, you guys know about it, here it is officially, <laughs> <laughs> this is happening. It leaked forever so. ago though, so... Um, well, the, the but, of it leaked. Yeah, and the, and the controller leaked, but... Um, the actual system, like the advertisement, okay. <laughs> with a picture of the system and the price. Nice. Um, so we know the Xbox Series S, uh, which is the all digital version, um, and doesn't look like it can do 8K, which I don't know if anything will really do true 8K for a while. Um, is 300 bucks? That's super affordable. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's I think that's great. The only d- downside I can see, because I think you know, it gives more accessibility to people to get Xbox. Only downside I can see is it has like 500 gigs. Uh, so if you're going to put a bunch of games on it, if it's all digital, you're going to have to get a hard drive along with it. So, yeah. um, And then the rumored price of the um, Series X is 500 bucks, which I think is kind of what everyone was thinking. So I said 550 but yeah. yeah. I think they're always going to kind of keep it right in them, right around the, the thing. So yeah. I'm interested to see if, what PlayStation is going to do now. I saw that they tweeted the, uh, I don't even know what the meme is, but it's the guy with like the side eye. Like. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So that it leaked last night and then they tweeted the guy with the side eye <laughs> and then they tweeted immediately after, well, we might as well make this official <laughs> and put funny. out <laughs> the actual, one, which is a good response to a leak. Yeah. That's pretty much. Yeah. I mean, that's what we've like talked about when we talked in our leak episodes. It's like, mm-hmm. just embrace it. Like it's going to happen. Yeah. Like there's no getting around it. You might as well yeah. just say like, oh, yeah, like this is it. You, like here's, you caught us. Yeah, yeah, like you, I, I mean, we can't tell you anything more than what you already know, I guess. So yeah. like, and yeah. as long as it's either you know a positive leak, something people yeah. are looking forward to, or just neutral, like a price, and you know this is happening. If you embrace it and you know make a joke about it, it just makes you look good. Yeah, right. Like 
I think Nintendo's a great company in a lot of different ways. That Mario announcement, the 3D Mario All-Stars, was so lackluster. I mean, it was exciting that, oh, hey, look, it happened, it's, finally. It's but we knew it was going to happen. It's, yeah. Like, it's like, yeah, it's like three games that are, what, 12 years old at the youngest, and they're not remastered. They're not, like, <laughs> any yeah. better. They're just... They're just decades old games. Like, go oh, good job. I'm still about it. I still got my pre order. It's weird Wait, that it is the freaking. They didn't update the graphics at all. No, no, it's no, not they are updated rendered. at all. They're, they're like uh, just rendered into HD. The Switch, yeah, wide HD. Screen. So, um, most but it's still notable, just like it's like here's blocky ass Mario from Mario 64. Yeah, so 64 is looks like the other ones. It's pretty noticeable in uh, Sunshine and galaxy though because they're rendered up into hd because they never were yeah so there were games that totally could have been hd but you know how nintendo waited forever to do (laughs) hd yeah so because they're them but i'm still pumped about it i never had an n64 um and i've never played sunshine so i got it and it's gonna be a weird collector's item since it's only available until april (laughs) that's i don't i thought that was just the super mario tetris 99 one that was nope that Super Mario 3D All Stars, digital and physical, for some reason only available until March 31st. Huh. No idea why. Because we've talked about this. Nintendo hates money. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They really hate money. Um, even when they kind of do something that's like, hey, look, what people have been asking for, like a remastered version of these games or just having them it's available. It's not remastered, on though. <laughs> right, right, or just having them available. On like, don't don't say it's remastered. No, no, I know, but, you know, people have been asking for a way to play them on yeah. Switch. They're like, here's a way to play them on Switch, but only for this many months. Yeah. Like, what is going on? No, it's just but like, no. This is, this, none of this is interesting. The Mario 99 is kind of interesting, but, like, yeah. beyond that, all of it's just kind of like, oh. Okay. Well, I think, all right, I don't know. I'm definitely not going to get it. I don't know if I'm big. It's not exciting, but it's interesting. That Mario Kart car is oh, interesting. Oh, the RC car? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a weird thing. I, yeah. I bet it sucks. Like, yeah, I, I, I mean, you get to put batteries in it. And it's probably not even close to fast or having the feel <laughs> of Mario Kart. It's just like, um, here's a yeah, shitty RC in, car that we branded with Mario Kart. Put a camera on. Yeah, and also, how big does your house have to be to be able oh, to make yeah. a Oh, yeah. You wouldn't be able to do that here. Not in this tiny no. house apartment. <laughs> no, so it, it was interesting, at least. Um, and then they're bringing uh, another uh, Wii U game over with a lot of downloadable content, it seems. Yeah. Or a lot of new content, which would be interesting because I really like that Mario game. But yeah, I think that if... So, especially because the games weren't remastered, when that thing got leaked, if Nintendo had said, yeah, we're just putting these three games in a bundle and selling them for Switch, it would have been more exciting than being like, yeah. oh, it's still a secret. Yeah, let's build it up to something. And yeah, I don't know. I just, yeah. I played Mario 64 when I was a kid and got it on my DS when I was older. And it's, yeah, it's okay. It's not like fun to play, it's so <laughs> clunky. Someone pointed out that the um, DS version has updated graphics and they are porting the N64 version. So I'm more excited about having Sunshine and Galaxy. Well, the DS version has like a bunch of other things too. Like it has Luigi Wario uh, in it. And uh, I still have Super Mario Sunshine in my GameCube. It's probably in my GameCube right now. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just don't have no interest in any of this. So, yeah. I guess I'll get it. I mean, I have it pre-ordered, so I'm going to get it. And uh, either way, it'll be a fun collector's item. And Dan likes to collect weird shit, and what could be weirder than this? Yeah. (laughs) I just don't see it being a collector's item, though. I mean, if it... Yeah, I don't know. I like... like, I mean, it's not in 20 years or whatever, but like... Scarcity. It's... It is some form of... Yeah. Just what, else def- <laughs> like, uh, what else is definitely not a collector's item is every Halo because there's a <laughs> yeah. zillion copies of each one. Yeah. But I make sure I have every version on physical disc. That's fair to have. So <laughs> it's like if you had each of the originals, sure, maybe there will be collectors someday. But yeah. I don't think this re-release will be. <laughs> well, yeah, and uh, the other thing is those games are probably like if you bought those three games in their original form, it'd be way more than. Oh yeah, sixty bucks because no. it is. Yeah, and I don't, them. I don't knock anyone for buying it or whatever. Obviously, like you'll have. What is it? Forty bucks, them, but it is a full sixty for all three. Twenty bucks a game. 
Yeah. So, yeah. which, I mean, if you want a Nintendo cartridge of a 64, probably 30 or more, I don't know. Yeah. Depends on, especially these, these, um, retro places mark stuff up quite a bit. They got to stay so. in business. They like money. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Like, I mean, <laughs> if, if, yeah. Yes, they do. Anyway, um, now that we got a little section of news out of the way, what have you guys been playing? Oh, what haven't I been playing is the question. Right. Yeah, we've had three weeks, and I really don't have uh, yeah. I really don't have a lot to go on. We've all played Divinity together. Have we talked about yeah. our I don't, yeah, I don't we, remember we if started, we had started. Yeah, we had started a few Maybe weeks. We played a few times. Session. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've had like fun. four or five no, sessions now. And yeah, we're having a great time. I think we're learning how to play with four people who are all autonomous and can kind of do whatever they want. Yeah, yeah. still so manage to. Uh, it's, like, the no, is- it's never like it's someone always finds a fight, and it's never like, well, why were you doing this? It's always <laughs> just like, oh yeah, we're here to fight. <laughs> like, yeah. None of us, no one like really the, cares why. That's <laughs> the, that's I, I always think part. about say, saying it like, fuck Clinton, why did you? It was like. Well, <laughs> Okay, but in 30 minutes, it's going to be me following some squirrel down a path, yeah. and I'm going to get ambushed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> One thing I've been doing a lot is I felt really bad early on. I stumbled upon a main quest and didn't realize it and, like, finished it. And I was like, oh, that was, like, a big part of the story here. And I just did it on accident. I talked to this guy. So I'm really afraid to do that again because I've already played it, and Neil's already played it, and I want you and Carl to, like, hear the story and figure out why we're doing stuff so a lot of times when we're not fighting i just like sit in chairs <laughs> yeah i saw you doing that at one day okay, we, so we all I'll just like, like sit down to you <laughs> yeah, so i'll just like sit down and i'll like read stuff on my phone or whatever and tell them like oh okay now we gotta go here because i just felt so bad i was like oh man they just missed all that because i talked to the dude so i just like yeah i've played it before my favorite part about it is the combat yeah. And it's not like we didn't play it forever ago. So yeah. yeah. It is I'm having a lot of fun with it. I just have like I just wish the UI was like half again better than it is. Cause it yeah. there's some things in it that just drive me nuts. Like I wish it had like I don't know like I don't want confirmation for everything, but like if I hit down on the D pad, like don't take three AP for me to tell me I failed at sneaking. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, no, obviously don't let sneak. Yeah. yeah, I think I think um, for me as someone who's used to console, I don't think as 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 bad because I've been dealing with that forever. Like every yeah. game comes later, but there are some huge inconsistencies. Like some one of my powers when I press A on it in my hot bar, my person like gets ready, and I have to press A again for it to start. Yeah. Then I have another power that if I press A on it in my hot bar, it just happens. Yeah. And I'm like, that's super. And maybe that's part of it too, is because yeah, some of them do have like a confirmation, like I was saying, mm-hmm. and then yeah, sneaking doesn't or attacking the ground, like you think you're like putting a move in or like you're trying to move yeah. somewhere and you just end up throwing a wand at the ground like yeah that's not obviously yeah, I, not what i wanted <laughs> i've had times where i've tried to attack certain things and i move towards it and yeah, yeah that's the most inconsistent thing overall i think about it's hard that to game. tell like what it's actually like doing what are you targeting what are you doing mm-hmm. yeah um but overall it's fun and sometimes that kind of makes it like, <laughs> like yeah. the, where the silliness comes sometimes yeah. like oops i accidentally exploded everything <laughs> yeah. so um <laughs> Oh, there's a hidden fire barrel over there. Oops. Yeah. Yeah, so we've been playing that. That's a lot of fun. I uh, I don't know. I'm going up the list here. I got beamng.drive, which is a like soft body car physics simulator. So you just mm-hmm. smash cars together and watch them crumple into pieces. Okay. Uh, I was playing it one day, and my brother hopped in to Discord, and I was just streaming it in the Discord, and he's like, oh, <laughs> Warren, my nephew, Warren, who's three uh or four he's four now uh warren always watches this he like spends like i like have to limit him to like 15 minutes a week or he'll go nuts like just spend days watching it that's funny <laughs> so <laughs> it runs in the family i guess uh i've been playing a lot of fall guys i don't know if that was if we had talked about that prior no. to no. so i haven't played it in a few weeks but uh when it first was like big and everyone was playing it was playing a lot of fall guys which is super fun it's just a everyone's like a little tic-tac thing 
that runs around and you can grab other people and you can jump and dive uh and it's like a uh elimination kind of thing there's races and then there's like obstacle courses and a few other kind of various things it's and essentially like a <clears throat> physics simulation with your little squirrely body yeah you're just yeah just jumping and running and jumping and grabbing and stuff and then there's like a soccer game and a tag game and stuff but yeah it's uh it's a lot of fun there it's like uh 60 people go into it at the beginning and then people get eliminated each round there's only ever five rounds maximum and the last one is like a one person wins kind of thing. There's one where there's like little hexagons and then whoever is the last and the, when you stand on them they disappear. Uh and then whoever is like last standing wins. There's one that's kind of like spins these uh bars around you have to jump and duck under them and stuff, but it's a lot of fun. I won I don't know. I think uh probably like the 10th game we played. And I've played probably like 50 cents and haven't won again. But <laughs> yeah, I've heard it's really hard to win. Yeah. I mean, 60 people go in, so your yeah. chance is just even there pretty low. And it's a lot of it's just kind of random for a while. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's very, very chaotic. And then it's like chaotic in the beginning and not stressful at all. And then they kind of like cross each other. And it becomes <laughs> less chaotic but more stressful as you get towards the uh, less and less people. That's fun. I've heard it's great and I hope it comes to Xbox. I thought I'd get in for PS4 because everyone's playing it. But I just yeah. have so many games. Yeah. the I got kind of mad and like rage quit because... I got into a game where I would have won. Uh, mm-hmm. and it was like the one where you have to jump the pipes and duck under it. And there's just a guy floating around in the level. And there was like three games in a row I played where people were just cheating. So mm. it was just like, and I was like reading through reviews and stuff. And it's like, yeah, I mean, right now they're having huge issues with cheaters. So I just kind of was like, all right, well, it's not worth my time to go into a game and just lose. Cause six of the 60 people are cheating. So yeah. Right, yeah. <clears throat> but, but it's fun. It's a lot of fun when you can get into yeah, actual games that aren't people being dickheads. Uh, other than that, I played uh, some Nancy Drew, uh, Secret of the Mystery of the Old Clock or something. Beg your pardon. <laughs> yeah. We were monkeying around one day. Everyone was like kind of winding down, and there were just a few of us. And I was like, mm. And one of our friends had kept talking about playing this Nancy Drew games. They're just point and click kind of mystery solve puzzles goofy adventures uh so i bought it It was like three dollars on steam so i bought it and we started playing it as a group and we got pretty far but then we got kind of stuck and i must have been doing something wrong but i couldn't you need money to buy these toys but to make money i had to deliver telegraphs and to deliver telegraphs i had to use the gas in the car but i couldn't make enough money to pay for the gas to (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> to even like make money so it was just losing money trying to deliver telegrams but is nancy drew explains the 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 throes of poverty <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah no that game was a lot of fun it's just uh that one i guess we were it's funny because we were talking about it because the guy who's like yeah i've been playing these nancy drew games he's not around a bunch but we were talking about it a few it was like probably a week and a half later after we stopped and he came back in and we're like, yeah, like talking about Nancy Drew. Uh, and the one that we played, Nancy, is like, it's like the 1920s. It's like middle or beginning of the Great Depression, like period piece. Uh, you have to like make money to use the payphone and all that to call her dad. And it's just kind of like old timey. You're driving around in an old car. And so we're talking to him about all these Nancy Drew things and he's like, Yeah. And the most recent one I played, like anytime you try to use your cell phone, Nancy's like, Oh no, I can't use that. It would be rude. And we're like, wait, what? <laughs> she has a cell phone? Because <laughs> we thought all of the Nancy Drews were like Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, pre depression. Really <laughs> like, but I guess that one's the only period one. And the rest are all like modern day. <laughs> Interesting. So somehow we picked the one that was like a weird outlier from the rest <laughs> of them. Uh, but yeah, the games, don't buy it, don't play it. It was god awful, but it was fun for a while. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, there was a there was a mini putt putt game in it, and you had to get par on the course. In you <laughs> to control the ball, you like click on the ball and then drag mm-hmm. the mouse. But like if the ball was like here. 
and you had to hit it this way, you'd pull the mouse back this way, but you could only right. pull it to the corner of the screen, so you could only get like this much <laughs> power on it. So you could never get enough power to hit the ball far enough to get power. <laughs> so it's just like, how am I supposed to do this? That's awful. <laughs> and it must just be like a like artifact of porting it from Windows ME or whatever it was originally right. on, that it just doesn't work. So... <clears throat> But uh, well, that's very random, Clinton. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, today or yesterday, though, I do want to talk about this. Yesterday, um, I bought Control and started oh, playing yeah. that, and it is so much better than I thought it would be. Hey. It's so good. Oh, I uh, the story in it has like really captured me. Uh, I'm like even reading all of the like extra material and things, mm-hmm. the world building stuff. Uh, it feels fun too like the just like the powers and all of the uh kind of upgrades and things that you get feel like you're actually like getting more powerful and like doing things so it's a lot of fun i've been really enjoying i'm probably 10 hours in or so right now uh but yeah it's super enjoyable if you uh get a chance i would get it and play it i am not gonna get it yet because you heard about the uh the drama around that did not so most games, if you buy them, like most kind of recent games or, or new games, if you buy them, you get a free upgrade um, to whatever the next gen is. For that one, you only get the free upgrade if you buy their Ultimate Deluxe Edition. So well, I think let, me, just, all right. let me let me save you some trouble right there. Clinton, you're going to love the game, but once you beat it, you're going to be done with it. Oh, gotcha. yeah. yeah. I don't want to play it again. I loved it. It was very fun. But it is a story based shooter with no online element and no reason to continue playing after you're yeah, done. Yeah, gotcha. Can't imagine. Unless so, you're a, complete, a completionist, which I know you are not. No. So. so don't, if I buy it and have plans to beat it before the new Xbox comes out, that's fine, is what you're saying. Yeah. I don't yeah. need to worry about having both versions. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's good to know. Yeah, a lot of people are very upset about that. I, yeah, I, it's I, awesome. I guess there's, there's probably going to be DLC and stuff. I won't buy the DLC. Um, I had fun with the main campaign and that's good enough for me yeah it's a lot of fun um on my end uh uh, was that all that you had clinton uh i mean there was the usual suspects as well so that's kind of yeah Um, oh oh you know what i should talk about this too because i played a bunch of it too in the last couple weeks but i bought rim world and started playing that so it's a like survival colony building game uh there's i don't even know how to describe it there's, there's so much to it it's like a story simulator is what the thing neil is smiled called. a smile that made me think he thought of a really inappropriate joke no no i just think clinton <laughs> could get his own like clinton survival game of the week corner oh, oh gotcha. yeah for sure <laughs> uh but this one's like a colony building kind of thing you so you don't have control of units or anything but you mm-hmm. like set out work schedules for your pawns uh and they just go around and do the things you have them set to do and you just like say like okay i want you to build walls here i want you to put guns turrets here put heaters and beds and xyz here here and here uh hunt these animals and then they go out and do it based on your like work priorities that you set for them and then there's kind of sounds like a more advanced version of like fallout shelter yeah probably uh yeah yeah, more active for sure yeah Uh, but it's uh, a lot of like mi- micromanaging and kind of that kind of stuff. Uh, and then you get like raids of enemies that come in and you have to defend against them and they get harder and harder. And depends on like what mode you're playing or whatever, but they start low and then they ramp up harder and harder as your colony becomes more kind of known and advanced and stuff. So it's been a lot of fun. I've only done the one... Uh, colony so far and i'm probably 15 20 hours into it uh i just (laughs) i the one lady she got shot by one of her compatriots in the head so she's got permanent brain damage uh and so like all of her motor functions and things are really low so she can't like do her work as well and stuff but and i've just been like trying to i got her hooked on this drug called luciferium which will slowly reverse any kind of uh injuries they have but they become like super addicted to it and if they don't get it they like go into a berserker rage and just start killing everyone (laughs) jesus so i have to like make sure i can keep getting this stuff or is that the killer before she goes crazy huh 
Interesting. Um, yeah, on my end, I, I finished CrossCode. Finally, I think I put 35 hours into it. Um, I, th- I, th- I was playing CrossCode last time we talked, I believe. Yeah, we uh, talked about it. Uh, really enjoyed it. Thought it was an awesome game. If you're kind of into some old school SNES kind of style RPGs, it's great. It kind of has, it's the story's not, like it has elements of Ready Player One in it because you're like within a game. Yeah. Um, but story, not like anything I've ever really played before. And uh, story-wise, really was interesting. Um, there's lots of twists and turns in it. And I was kind of like, oh, shit. Like, uh, but overall, just fun gameplay, crazy puzzles. Um, and really good. I recommend it. Um, and it's on Game Pass, so give it a shot. Uh, Neil and I, when he came home, we played Battletoads for a while. Because Battletoads is only couch Local co-op. Play, yeah. 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 It was so weird. Like, I felt like Battletoads has been a thing in kind of like in cultural, like the gaming culture forever. I mean, there's even that joke, that meme where people will call GameStops and ask them if they had Battletoads. And like people at GameStop, like at this time, you can't talk to anyone who, lived, who worked at GameStop at that time without hearing a story of people doing that all the time. And then there was like that E3 announcement that Battletoads is coming. And then they did kind of like, here it is. Like it didn't have like a big splash. Like in the only play Battletoads. It was, it was, we didn't finish it. Uh, I, and I don't want to play it by myself, but it was fun. It wasn't, it, well, it was funny. That's not what I meant to say, but yeah. uh yeah, it was like a more fleshed out version of a, you know, any of those uh, X-Men like, a, mm-hmm. a, arcade cabinets where you pick out of you know six heroes and you fight with your friends but then it had fun like uh you know like racing down a a, a fast hallway and you have to jump over the logs and go through the right doors mm-hmm. and um, yeah we and died a lot it was there was a lot. Tough part. yeah and um, uh the, the cut scenes are very like modern cartoon network regular show um no they're kinda. like early aughts true 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 yeah they're yeah. i wouldn't say they're modern um it's definitely made for our age group yes um, yeah definitely. i will say the first cut scene maybe the first two to three were not funny <laughs> Neil and I were like this is this sucks and then there was a couple things like okay it kind of started to get rolling a little better where i started to enjoy the cut scenes but at the beginning we we're like this isn't funny but the game is fun <laughs> yeah um but yeah, it, it was all right. Um, then I started playing a game called Undermine, which is a, a roguelike that's kind of like old school Zelda, where you kind of go through little dungeons, and each um, dungeon has like little rooms, and it's like weird. It's kind of like the mines in Stardew Valley, where you're trying to go as far down as you can and like find the hole, and Zelda, and enter the dungeon. It's it's fun. It was it's okay. Um, We've been playing Apex Legends. The new character came out, and I really, really like her. Um, that's a good played, time. Played so much of that game. Um, I <laughs> yeah. the battle pass, pass, so I got to keep playing it, even though Dan and I just started playing. Yes, we started playing Avengers. Uh, so we're yeah. probably going to talk about this for a while. And... I'm, I don't know. I think that it's weird, because if you've listened or watched anything else, you're going to hear this game is awful and you shouldn't buy it. I haven't and heard then, anything about it. Like, I've heard literally, I've seen nothing on Reddit. I've heard nothing. I've heard no one talk about it. So, so I figured when it was you just look like, at, like yeah, yeah, that's when you, nothing. When you look at game, like actual numbers and reviews, it's getting like seven for the most part. And I think the problem is, and I've talked about this before, in our culture, something either has to be the greatest thing to ever happen or it sucks. And this game is pretty good, like in it. So I'm enjoying it like a lot. Like all I want to do is play it. I mean, it it's it has flaws for sure. It builds itself. It it is the it's destiny meets a brawler. Um, You have destiny loot with a brawler like fighting system. Um, If you do not like brawlers and you do not like destiny, you will not like this game. Worst nightmare. Why would you think? about getting this game yes i talked um, to somebody on facebook today who's like what's with all the gear i just want to fight and i'm like then you did not watch anything about this game my dude <laughs> uh 
<laughs> but yeah, Dan and I beat the campaign, which is a short, a tight 10 hours. Uh, they mm-hmm. could have made it longer, but uh, I, I'm kind of glad they didn't. Um, I'm, I'm glad they didn't because it's the, just the story and all the extra stuff comes after. That's what like, Destiny does too. You get yeah. through the campaign really quickly and then you start on strikes and raids and blah, blah, blah. And a, a lot of what we're seeing with the criticism comes from the multiplayer content, which was, yes, does feels a little feel a little tacked on. Um, people are saying it's kind of empty, uh, which I disagree with. Um, there's just, it's not fully fleshed out. Yeah, sure. It's definitely going by way of like Anthem. Like we need to put this out there and then we'll not fix it, but we'll tack mm-hmm. on to it. We'll add to it. Um, uh, but it, but it's obviously going for us. It's going much better than, uh, than Anthem, Anthem saw, uh, saw with their release. Um, so multiplayer aside, uh, if you're if you are a if you can stomach this type of brawling game if you're okay with that the campaign is one of the best campaigns I've played in the last two three years it's really good I mean it's it kind of really reminded good. me of getting done with like Gears five like when we were done with Gears five and we we're like that was a good campaign like I actually cared about the characters wanted to know what was happening it's a really good Marvel story like they could have sold that script as a Disney like I would have watched watch that movie like for sure so um yeah, one of the big things follow. i i really like about it is it doesn't deal with the infinity stones and it doesn't deal with hydra like they i think they kind of took not a super brave step because i think you know there's a lot of marvel fans out there but kind of a good step in the direction of be like this is not movie related like at all like there's nothing there and i think that some people are kind of a I've seen something on Reddit. Well, in the movie, Cap looks like this, and they don't look. Nobody looks like the actors, and it's like because <laughs> none is, of the actors look like the comic book characters. <laughs> either. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I'm really happy they took that step away from the movies because if we had to fight Thanos for the Infinity Stones for the one millionth time in it in a Marvel game, I would have like probably been not interested at all. And I know I said on this podcast when the reveal trailer came out, like they those characters were rendered weird. It was they like bad. They're much better now. <laughs> yeah, it was like you know, late thirty year old like suburban house husbands and wives just became <laughs> superheroes. Um, they look much better. Um, with I don't really like what they landed on with Tony Stark. He kind of just looks like a college frat boy, but everybody yeah. else looks good. Um, I don't like cap suit, but that's fine because you can get different suits. Yeah, um, but no, I, I look it, if people if you don't want to play another Destiny clone and you don't like brawlers, don't buy this game. If you are a yeah. Marvel fan and you can and you're kind of lukewarm on either of those things, I kind of guarantee you you'll love this. I'll tell you, this game will go on sale early and often. Yes, um, yes, it will be it will be forty dollars by Christmas probably. Wait. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I'm glad I bought it. It's really fun. I'm so happy. I was like, I'm not going to get it. All these reviews are saying, skip it. It's boring. And then I was, then I read an article that was like, the gaming industry needs to get over itself. Marvel it is just a lot of fun. And I was like, all right, all right I'm going to give this a shot. It's Labor Day weekend. I got three days. And I started playing it. And at, I'm a huge Hulk fan. And Everyone says, not everyone, but a big thing is saying that Hulk is the least fun character, even among people who like this. And sure, if you like strategy or tactics, he's not super fun. But if you like to press buttons and watch him murder people, it is a blast. Yeah, they, I make, love they, playing him. they make no story loopholes to, to really tell you how these beloved Marvel and Disney characters are not murdering thousands of people in cold blood. <laughs> you all <laughs> kill people. <laughs> As the Hulk, you can pick someone up and slam them on the ground. A normal human being. Multiple times. Yeah, Cap takes his shield like sideways and buries it into people's chests. Like, no, he's fine. It was right between the rib cage. There's nothing important there. Yes. (laughs) Black Widow just straight up has guns. Just shooting people. (laughs) Um, Yeah, my favorite part about the game is there's six characters and they are all completely different for for the most part. Uh, the weirdest thing, I think Miss Marvel and Hulk kind of have similarities in the way that they just smack people around. Um, but if you're tired of smacking people around as the Hulk, then you can play uh, Iron Man and you can jump up and he's got lasers. He's got three different weapon types and you can lock onto people with missiles and like do um, 
damage to multiple characters with lasers swinging around. Uh, if you get bored with that, you can play Thor and you can throw your hammer at someone and it, it will pin them to the ground while you fight every other person around you. Um, Neil They're did really point like, out that Thor's hammer sounds like a dodgeball. And now it I sounds can't exactly it. like a those like, <laughs> like a rubber ball. Like the red like think of a dodgeball <laughs> from Dodgeball, the movie Dodgeball, starring Will Ferrell, whoever the fuck was in that movie. You nailed it. <laughs> Not Will Ferrell, but he could have no. been. What is There's the guy's a, uh, name? Um, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Nope, no, not the thing. Wedding Crashers. Uh, wedding Crashers. Vince Vaughn. Vince, Vince Vaughn. Vaughn. Thank you. you uh, anytime someone says uh, dodgeball, like the sound of a dodgeball, there's a Simpsons game that was on the Super Nintendo, and Bart walks around bouncing one of those, and it's like, bang, bang, bang. That's the sound that I hear. No, it's not like that. It's more like, <laughs> Dunk, dunk. <laughs> um, but yeah, the it's super fun. Everybody has kind of different moves. Um, the dialogue in the campaign is fantastic. The voice acting is really good. Yep. Um, there are some questionable decisions in the game, and there are some uh, things that aren't great about it so far. But it is a you know, it, they are hopefully going to fix these things. The worst thing so far is that the game crashes. Um, I've had a couple crashes, but for some reason it crashes for Neil much more. I think it's because I have the original Xbox and you have the the updated one. Uh, But yeah, and I'm not letting it off uh, scot-free. It has issues, definitely, performance Mm -hmm. and otherwise. Um, But it definitely doesn't deserve the... If anybody calls it trash, they either... They just don't like that form of game or they're just buying into the the media hype machine because mm. it's a pretty good game. Yeah. It's really fun. It's like, it's weird because I think that it, it gets panned for all these things that so many other games have done. They're like, it doesn't do anything different. I'm like, neither did destiny. Destiny's just borderlands with less loot. Yeah. Like, like it's like <laughs> no yeah. one got mad at the division for being the same as destiny. Like it just took two genres and put them together. It happens all the time. Like no one said, all oh, the witchers just Zelda. Like it's it's weird how it gets panned for that. Um, also, I've just seen straight up untrue things. Like people will go on about it's just a mobile. It's a it's a mobile game on console. I'm like, it's the only thing that you can micro have, do for microtransaction is cosmetics. So if that's if it's a mobile game, then so is Overwatch. Yeah, like there's it's no just, energy. There's no timers. There's no yeah. There's no, you can't, you can skip, every character has its own battle pass. If you want to spend money to skip levels in that, you can. Uh, Why you would want to do that, I don't know. That's part of the fun, is like unlocking things by doing it. Um, But sure, if you want to get mad that they offer you to be able to do that, then fine. Um, But it is a live game, uh, and it looks like we're getting two new characters by the end of the year, Kate Bishop and um, Black Panther. Uh, apparently, there was supposed to be a Black Panther trailer the day that Chadwick Boseman died, so they scrapped that for now. Um, but I'm excited for more to come out. I'm having a lot of fun. Even I was nervous. I was like, this campaign's great. Apparently, the end game is where this thing falls apart, and we're still going and leveling up our characters, and my Hulk isn't even like halfway done with everything. And that's one character. Everybody has their own level tree. Everybody has their own battle pass and all kinds of stuff. So. My biggest complaint is that it does need more bosses. There's really only two. Um, and you kind of fight them over and over. So that'll get annoying. Yep. <laughs> but they do play. have a clip. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I said I was going to play the basketball bouncing from The Simpsons. <laughs> from the Simpsons. <laughs> do it. Now, when you're on the main hub. Oh, he's talking. Never mind. There's a guy talking in it. Oh, uh, gotcha. <clears throat> uh, yeah. I. If you were like, if you were excited about this game. And you just didn't buy it due to reviews. I highly recommend that maybe take a look at some gameplay and stuff like that. Cause I wait, am down. Wait for it to be 50, 40 bucks. Oh yeah. I mean, if you really just want to play the campaign, then, then go down. But I, this is one of the, I don't really like a lot of AAA games. And, uh, this is one of the few that I bought full price. I'm like, sweet. Cool. Yeah, is it kind some, of like linear levels, like destiny kind of thing? Yes, um, but there. So every level has like a main thing that you head towards, and then they have all these question marks that are like mini events. 
So you can go and you can rescue a um, shield agent or an inhuman. You can find loot. There's like these kind of pu- very light puzzles of like um, buildings that you can get into. Uh, there's special units you have to destroy. Um, or you go do the main thing. But um, after after the, the campaign, there's kind of... I don't know what a sabotage mission is yet. We haven't done one of those. There's vault missions where you have to like unlock this vault and then defend it. Um, there's hive missions where it's kind of like a wave until you get to a boss and then kind of like these boss battles. So it's pretty fun. I'm excited for more to come out. Yep. Um, and then the last thing that we played for just one second was Neil and I played Wasteland 3 for a little bit. And decided, wow, this game looks like a lot of fun, but it looks too much like Divinity right now, and we're going to wait a little bit. It's Divinity with guns. Divinity, it's Fallout Divinity. <laughs> There's way too much shit on the screen, but I'm going to have fun to, with it when we get there, but we probably only played an hour or two. Yeah. It's on um, the list. Definitely on the list, but it is very much like Divinity. Um, but I made that. my guy super tiny. <laughs> I forgot on about accident or on purpose. <laughs> no, on, no, purpose. on purpose because I'm like, if you picture a human and then picture a not acceptable size for a human, like the length of a of a grown man's calf, they let you choose that. <laughs> and I was like, if you let yes. me pick this, you need to justify it. Why is this a choice? And it's not like they let you turn a slider all the way down and make him that short. There is a <laughs> preached option. Board. Super small human. So yes. does it make you harder to hit, or like... uh, I don't know. I can still I don't think so. Cover that is visibly taller than me. Uh, it so looks yeah. like they just thought it was hilarious and they did it. Like it's and not. They let you. They let you pick blue skirt, uh, blue skin. So I'm rolling through with Papa Smurf and we're fucking nice nice. shit up. Like he's like, it's hard to see him when we're playing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like, because it is, it's like divinity, like top down. And a lot of times I'm like, where is Neil? <laughs> like, I literally can't see him. <laughs> it's like if our character, if my character picked him up, it'd probably be like large teddy bear size. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. I have no idea why it does not affect yeah. gameplay yet. I'll look it up. Also, we just got like it it was fun, and I mean it, it will be fun, but suddenly it was like, oh. Party sizes are, it's a party of six. It's like each of us are going to have to control three characters. Like, holy crap. Yeah. So I can't imagine playing that by yourself. Like just being like, but everyone shares inventory. So that's a little different. A little more. <laughs> yeah. Manual. That doesn't then, make it easier. Yeah. So um, anything else that you played, Neil? Solo? Uh, no, I think uh, that's it. Again, played a lot of Apex this last month. <laughs> Yes, and our buddy, our third Apex person is gone, so we're just going to dive into Avengers. Yep. So. Um, but yeah, this like, week we're going to... Like, what's up? How many people can play that? Like two, four? Uh, you can do four. Four. Nice. Yep, so you can kind of make your strike team. Um, and, and they, they have... Don't you, they don't let you do duplicate Avengers, which yeah. is a risky choice, but I like it. Yeah, um, and they have, I think s- there was a leak of 17 planned characters. Um, and each nice. character's coming out, and it's free, and it come, then it comes with a little story. Nice. So the trailer for Kate Bishop has dropped, and we're looking for Hawkeye. We don't know where Clint Barton is. Um, or she yeah, does. He He's I working for AIM. In the oh, trailer. yeah. Did you, not, did you watch a different trailer? <laughs> I kind of half-watched it, because I just wanted to get to the I end figured. to know when she was. Okay. I yeah. just wanted to know the release date. Honestly, That's why I was I like... It. Clinton always gets mixed up in these things. Oh, gotcha. Everybody thinks he's bad. And that's what that's how Hawkeye goes. Yeah, for sure. Oh, one more complaint about the game. What? There are two factions. There's S.H.I.E.L.D. and Inhumans. And they each have their own, like, hub. And the loading times are abysmal, by the way. (laughs) They are awful. Um, Luckily, the loading screens are fun. They're either really epic, there's some epic ones, and there's like funny ones where they're just kind of hanging out in the uh, like helicopter thing. What do you call them? Quinjet. Uh, Quinjets. And Miss Marvel's like drumming on her knees. Yeah, so they're fun, but man, they're long. Um, so 
it's kind of like destiny where you have to go to these faction people and they give you like quests like hey kill this many people or do this move this many times or whatever and they give you points there's a faction you can get special faction gear uh you have to go to two separate hubs for absolutely no reason <laughs> uh and i wish that at the end of the campaign or whatever they'd be like hey we saved the inhumans they don't need to hide underground anymore they're just going to hang out with you on the helicarrier because there's plenty of room uh, and they don't. And so you have to go to the the ant hill just underground to <laughs> to level up your shit. To visit the one person and get the quest set every day that they totally could have just done on the helicarrier. That's yeah. that's really that's really my only the only flaw that's not a like performance flaw to me that really stands out is why do I have to go to two separate hubs? There is absolutely no reason. All right. Last complaint. Okay, today we're starting a two-parter. Um, uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna. I have some basic, uh, some basic questions here, uh, and through them, we are going to start sculpting each of ours, not one collective, each of our perfect RPG, uh, Jesus. And uh, I will, and then we'll all have a week to sit and think on it, and we will come and we will pitch them. Um, Quinn is <laughs> shaking his head. He will not be a part of this. Um, <laughs> no, mine's pitch... just going to be awful because I, I have no original ideas for this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't. I that's the thing. I don't think anybody. I think originality is blending now. It's taking things that have already been done <laughs> instead, and smashing it with something else. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, and I'm not asking for a complete originality here, and we don't have to be original today. I'm, well, I've got like ten questions, and we can sit and talk on on what each of we what each of them mean to us, which we prefer, and maybe some stuff that I hadn't thought of. Uh, and you also do not have to stick to your answer today. Um, it's just to get kind of like a guideline, a, a baseline. Dan's already got like I won't spoil it. Ben's way ahead of the pack. I'm way ahead of everybody. <laughs> but that's all right. I'm still down to talk to chat. Okay. Um, so let's start from the top. Um, I, I think uh, a, multiple, a multitude of questions could be considered the most important. Uh, I'm going to start with your world in your ideal RPG. Uh, you can, is it real or is it fantasy? You don't need to, st- at this point, you don't need to specify time or um, anything. I think I used to think that I always wanted like a like a pretty fantasy kind of world, like kind of like either like a Zelda or a Witcher or Skyrim kind of thing. But I think over time, I've gotten a little bit like, while I still enjoy those worlds, I've gotten a little bit like everything is in this world. So I, I like uh like Crosscode was interesting to me because it was an RPG that wasn't in that world. So I kind of like the idea of having something slightly different. All right, a non-answer from Dan Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, pr- like, what do I prefer to play in, or like, I guess, what are you I asking? Know. A new a new RPG comes out tomorrow that you're super psyched about. Is it set in the real world or a real-ish realism? Blah, 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 real-ish or is it like fantasy? I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. I would say at present like a modern urban fantasy or something. Ooh. That would be different. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, definitely fantasy for me. Escapism, escapism, escapism. For if it's gonna be an RPG, it's gonna be set like we're talking about being original. Uh, if anybody puts out some RPG right now, it's either gonna be in like some weird wasteland, out badlands type thing, I'm done with it, or it's gonna be set in New York. Fuck that. I don't want that at all. <laughs> uh, or even if it's like a major metropolis, I just don't think video games do large cities well. You can't go in every building. It's it's just never. I, I don't know. It's it, that's never for me. Uh, fantasy all the way. So would yours be like like Are you talking like true like dragons, trolls, kind of fantasy, or just uh, kind some, of that? Uh, some element of fantasy. Uh, yeah, dragons, trolls. Why not? I'm not saying there needs to be dragons and trolls, but definitely yeah. there's there's magical medieval kind of. Yeah. yeah, 
feel to more it. of a games of thrones Ian. brutal human there's magic elements there but it's not yeah. like pixie dust up your butt yeah um <laughs> what game is pixie dust up your butt i it's just i, I know, sometimes, sometimes like Sometimes Skyrim, I don't know. It's so magical yeah. and just yeah, high fantasy. You want like low fantasy. Low fantasy is the correct. Definitely a low fantasy world. Uh, okay. And now here's something that I hadn't really thought of. And the next, the next thing I was going to ask is time period. Like, mm-hmm. what is a modern fantasy? That would be dope. Yeah, uh, like what honestly, when me? I think fantasy, I'm thinking, I'm thinking medieval. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, more of a early 2000s fantasy with <laughs> i mean yeah it's just like it'd be like i don't know like harry my potter brain goes or... to like Steve yeah harry Monkey. potter i guess yeah but although yeah. it's weird right because like harry potter like is like weird... a, it's like a 1800s fantasy yeah <laughs> like yeah. set in the modern day <laughs> yeah it's really weird because like <laughs> I like how in in Harry Potter they're like he goes to this magical world and it's like well wouldn't some of these things be useful like cell phones yeah. <laughs> like money but that actually makes the, sense yeah um, right like cars light bulbs yeah. are pretty cool yeah they don't have they don't have any television. electricity right you tell me wizards like don't watch movies or anything like that's <laughs> kind of weird. <laughs> We just stare at our. We draw a picture and then it moves for us. Yeah, <laughs> we yeah, so, so so are weird. portraits. <laughs> I do not ha- possess the the capacity to create such a world, a modern fantasy world. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna say low fantasy, like medieval time, maybe closer to the era. Maybe not medieval. Maybe swords are definitely still like the way to go. But a couple rich people got some sort of musket gun like fable three ish gotcha a couple people like guns are starting yeah, like to weird die. like weird fantasy like obviously this never was like a, a thing like people weren't fighting with swords and guns but like we do that here yeah yeah uh okay yeah. dan time period um see i think that uh again I'm, I'm tired of the medieval kind of thing i think i'd like something a little more modern um and I, and I don't, I don't want it to be wastelandy. I don't I want it. So oh, I'm, I'm so getting away sick from of wasteland. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm getting away from the three, the big three. I don't want it to be medieval based. I don't want it to be wastelandy, and I don't want it to be neon. Yeah, <laughs> like that's, yeah. I am done with those things. I want it to be something. But you gotta uh, have, different. you gotta have, grimy wasteland, Dan, or you have to have. Borderlands Neon, Cell Shaded. Hyperviolet. Yeah. Or, yeah. Dan, you get Fantasy World. That's Pick it. One. That's <laughs> it. No. Um, yeah, I, I'm excited to tell you guys more about my game, but it is it will be more of a modern era. Yeah, no, I think mod- like modern urban fantasy right now is like the big thing in like fantasy literature. At least yeah. for me, like re- what I've been reading and like what I see other people reading has been a lot of like modern urban fantasy and there's a lot of like interesting things going on with it. Like, I don't know. People have a lot of interesting ideas like beyond just, uh, what's that vampire movie that all the girls loved when we were in high oh, school. Twilight. Twilight. Yeah. Like beyond even but, like that kind of stuff. But, and that's probably something that kind of, uh, inspired some of this stuff at oh, this point. Yeah, no, I mean, like, it was like urban fantasy was like becoming a thing then, and I think, you know, right. it, it was, was like the mainstream. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of interesting books and good books about kind of urban fantasy and things. Uh, a lot of them, though, do have kind of like that weird Harry Potter, like, there's two worlds, and the magic world is very much kind of in the archaic like with the things that they like yeah. they don't do technology you know <laughs> yeah yeah like magic and technology don't mix it's not allowed which i always <laughs> find interesting weird yeah that's true there was a game called the technomancer that was like pretty much ruled as like a solid six that came out not too long ago <laughs> who did magic and tech at the same time there's but a I uh I don't know. It's called. Oh, I'm never gonna remember it. New, 
Numenora, I think. It's a mm-hmm. tabletop RPG. I think it's called Numenora. Uh, I could be way off base with that. But the premise of that is that uh, you are on a so or in a world where some super super advanced civilization came into fruition and then died off and the re- remnants of that are still around and that's like what the magic of the world is oh that's so like cool. there's just like this super advanced tech that no one knows how it works how anything happens and like that's the magic of the world so like so you halo. find i was gonna say it's very similar to halo so you find like broken pieces of machinery and you pull a piece of it out and it makes you be able to levitate stuff or whatever like based on xyz science principles that you don't actually know about or whatever that's pretty cool i think it's called newman i'd have to look at it but the whole yeah the whole thing is that like you're part of this like dead civilization and like finding remnants of it and just like not understanding how it is or how it works and like it's that idea of like any sufficiently advanced technology is going to seem like magic Right, just like taking that to its kind of like furthest point. Huh. Okay, so and this is kind of encapsulated in the last questions, but uh, environment. Are are you thinking mainly rural, mainly hybrid, or is your world so large? Or sorry, rural metro, or is your world so large that it could be hybrid? It's not Numenor. That's the world of J.R. Tolkien. <laughs> <laughs> I'll out this. Uh, I don't know. I, like you were saying, like any video game in a sufficiently large city just falls flat because it does, because it's just empty. Like and mm-hmm. and like you live in a major city. We've all been to them. Like major cities don't feel empty when you're there. And any right. video game that is in a major city just feels empty because it is like the same six people that you're coming across Mm -hmm. doing just kind of inane things. Uh, And they don't know, they don't have like schedules or like set, like they don't have lives. They're just like, here's the six things that they're programmed to do. They're going to go do them or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they don't have any kind of, you roll up on a cabin, cabin in the woods in a fantasy game. You're like, this fucker's got a mission or he's going to try to kill me. Let's find out. (laughs) Yeah. That's true. Um, yeah, and I think like in those more fantasy worlds, you can make because the towns weren't as big. You can make it feel a little more alive because it's not this giant metropolis. Yeah. Yeah. Or I think the other time that a city actually works is like in Spider Man, where you're meant to be above everyone else, so you don't, you can't really, you yeah. don't notice it as much. Um, I don't know. I think uh, just a little hinty hint. My world is heavily based off of a game that has come out recently um and not not based influenced by and maybe some uh movies from the 90s and it's not it's not a city and it's not a rural area and it's a secret until next week (laughs) oh i was closer than i thought it's numenera not numenora numenera Uh, okay um i i would definitely go with a hybrid but uh I, I think you get the best best of both worlds there. Uh, I think from from a, like a level design point of view, I think making a rolling hills or like a creepy cavern or you know mount a mountainous region is always going to be more. That's your eye candy. I think that's always going to be more fun to look at than a city. I mean, cities are pretty, but it's essentially just because things are so. It's it's of uh, it's quantity over quality. There's so much for your eye to look at that it's it's interesting. It's visually interesting. Or I think actual the actual beauty comes from kind of the outdoor scenery. So probably like some smaller towns towns with obviously like a larger one. There's always going to be a big town that's a capital. That's how humans evolved. Uh, but yeah, more like villages, 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 capital. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah yeah i don't know I, it's interesting kind of like to talk about this kind of stuff because like even like i feel like a lot of like small town like oh yeah i roll up to this small town i'm the stranger in town so everyone's like just stares at me and all that stuff is kind of like 
played out too in a lot of RPGs. Like that mm-hmm. is a trope in and of itself. But like, I mean, it, there's a reason that things like that are tropes because they're a good way to make you feel kind of like important to the stories because you're just like i said rolling up into town as a stranger or yeah. you're like part of the town and you know everyone there and they're all like hey kenny like how's marge and your guy's like oh she's dead or whatever like <laughs> <laughs> you know the classic opening line how's marge like, she's dead yeah <laughs> That's what I like about I, I I really want to play more of it, but that outward game that I think you and Sam played a while ago that's mm-hmm. really hard. It's like you start the game, you are coming back from a journey where you went and sold some things, your ship crashes, you come back and everyone in the town hates you and you need to you owe them all money and you've you lost all your money. money. Yeah. But you yeah. your money sank in the ship. Yeah, it's such an interesting way to open a game like, hey, everyone hates you and you owe them money. Yeah. Because of like, something ooh. your mother did. <laughs> right. It's like, ooh, and you're or your grandma. Your, like, family something your grandma sins did. or something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, but that's really interesting. That's a way to be like the anti chosen one. That's an original take. Like, it really yeah. is. Well, that it's whole like, game is about being game. the anti chosen one. Hates you. Yeah. 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 The whole game is yeah, about but, just the struggle of like, living in a world like that yeah what if yeah what if what if you lived in lord of the rings and you didn't have any content <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and you had no magic what would it be like and that's what that game is like yeah yeah i was reading on the reddit because i played with it a bit and had a lot of fun and but didn't want to get super into it yet but i looked on the reddit and it was like what do i do at the beginning and like the top three comments were run away <laughs> <laughs> like you're just supposed to run from stuff because there's no like magical yeah. experience or anything yeah. like that you just gotta find items yeah so it's like the 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 small seaside town like even that game is a small seaside town like it's it's mm-hmm. i feel like it's like played out like it's yeah like i don't know uh okay your protagonist mm-hmm. um are they silent text-based responses or voiced responses uh mine are silent for sure and i like a silent person i'm uh i kind of am tired of everybody having all this choice (laughs) yes snarky like in all this this false choice to some extent too right um everything kind of ends up the same uh I think that games got too, and people got too obsessed with, I should be able to say and do whatever I want, and there should be a million different outcomes for everything. Um, I, this shouldn't be surprising for anyone who's listened to this before, but like my games, I want to do stuff. I don't want to watch people talk, and I don't want to talk that much. Um, and I think when you get into you know voice stuff, you kind of you lose kind of the I idea that you're true. playing. Yeah. Oh, yeah right you know so See, that's where we differ like i don't want to put myself into a game i want to yeah. completely be another character yeah like, neil doesn't need to be in the vi- neil just needs to not be here for a bit let's yeah let's be tom or i don't know somebody else or fucking papa smurf that's why when dan and i <laughs> always pl- play co-op games together dan makes dan and i make like i can be blue i'm gonna be winston from overwatch <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> for I'm sure Papa Smurf. uh i really like making blue characters with white hair that's my go-to i don't know why <laughs> um if you let me do it i'm gonna do it yeah uh, i i would say my my characters are definitely text-based responses uh i think i think it's really hard to do voice responses in rpgs um witcher being the only example that i can think of that did it well I'm excited to see Baldur's Gate because all of that's voiced, and I'm really? interested to see how it, yeah, how it, it, it just, how it goes. It either, I mean, it it just sets it bumps your workload up so much, especially oh, yeah. especially if you're gonna let your characters choose from two, three, four, five voices. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think I don't know how that works. Maybe the protagonist doesn't. Maybe you choose a protagonist. I don't know how Baldur's Gate works. If there are, it might just be like Mass Effect where there's two voices and you get one of them. Right. And 
but I don't know. I don't. I haven't looked into it that much. But yeah, I know that the whole thing is supposedly voice acted. So I'm excited for that. So what are you? Are you a silent text or voiced? I don't know. I guess I don't know. I don't have a preference, so I don't know. Whatever's done well. That's yeah. an answer. Okay. Um. Here's a weird question. Uh, navigation map. Um, you're thrown out into the world. Can you can you see everything? Like, can can you from the get go? Whenever you get out of the tutorial dungeon or whatever your equivalent of that is, can you see the map in its entirety? No, I enjoy finding um, areas like the next area. Um, and that's I kind of like that in like Breath of the Wild, like how you open. I know the people criticize the towers and stuff, um, but I did enjoy like, hey, there's that thing over there. Let's go look at it, and then I can open up a part of the map. I also enjoy. Um, I think that's what he means. Is like Breath of the Wild, you can see everything. Or are you talking about? Do I press start no, I'm and have about a map? like you get out of the dungeon in Skyrim? You can open your map and know you know where oh. every single city is. Uh, and you can even like you know grab a cart and just travel there instantly if you want to. Um, so no, because like I, I guess it's a little different. I actually prefer. I'm kind of tired of. I mean, I, we already just talked about this in the beginning. I don't really enjoy AAA games because I feel I feel like they're all the same. I'm kind of tired of open world. I enjoy um, things that are a little more sectioned off. And when you go to that new section, like, oh, wow, look how different the environment is in this section of the game than the other one. And so I don't really want to know exactly what everything looks like and where everything is. Okay. You should play Control. I probably will. <laughs> I've heard it's great. <laughs> That's how it's set like up. That? Is, yeah, it's a little section yeah. off. Yeah. Uh, Can question. you guys hear my cat trying to break into the room? No. Okay, I just want to make sure that was it. <laughs> If she is real mad the door is closed. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I agree with Dan. I like the kind of like unlocking different areas and not... I, I, I like, I guess, more how like... If it's, if it's open world, if I'm going to do like a full open world one, I like how Breath of the Wild does it, where I can just go anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, it's I can just go unlock it all or whatever if I want to. I can go to the Grudo Lands. I can go to Mount Hot Now or whatever it's called. Uh, Mount Hot. Hot <laughs> Are you hungry? <laughs> no, that is so. That is a D and D Forgotten Realms mountain. So I'm just getting sure? my mountain. Is mountains. it sponsored by Little Caesar? <laughs> no, it's it's it's, it's called Houghton Houghton now or something. It's like H O T E N O E W or something. I don't know. It's like weird spelling. Uh, but I, for some reason, I was thinking uh, <laughs> that was the uh, what's the Mount Doom right that's in um, Zelda. Zelda. Yeah. Is it Mount Doom? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, I was thinking it was <laughs> the D and D one. But uh, yeah, no, I like I like being able to go to anything because it makes like playing it again later more accessible i feel because you can just like oh i want to go do this rather than like okay if i want to do that i have to go through the six other sections first before i can get to mm -hmm. the yeah. later ones uh death mountain it's, not it's called death, death mountain. mountain there it is thank, thank you zach <laughs> uh what is but, mount doom from then mount doom is from lord of the rings from, yeah <laughs> Is it? Yeah. That's okay. It's probably. Room. Or no, that's Mordor. Things. No, yeah. That's, yeah. That's they go but to it Mordor. is Mount Doom. I think that they're throwing it into. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> There's too much Tolkien. fantasy trope. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> See, if any too of you guys make Tolkien in fantasy, <laughs> if any of you guys make a fantasy game, you better have some wildly different ideas because I don't know what you can do anymore. Well, if you haven't. Just... Tolkien. You probably haven't guessed yet, but this and Zach actually just hit on it in chat. My answer to this is Dark Souls. Fuck maps. You don't need a map. Yeah. Can you see it? Then you can go there. Yeah. Figure it out. And can you not get there? Well, then fuck you. Find another way or don't <laughs> get there. Um, I, I in a game where I 
got lost so many times. I never was upset by it. Um, and I think that was because there's no, you can't pull up any over map. There's no compass. Mm-hmm. There's no nothing. It's you need, you need to learn what happens to you when you go to that building and open the door. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, I guess you could see it as a linear RPG. I mean, it's not, it's truly not open world, but you can go so many different directions at the start of each game. Um, and, you know, enter so many different biomes just, just by walking. Um, and I, and I, and I really love that. Um, I, I think I'm, I speak for all of us and we're all pretty much done with like, don't make your world big just to have it be big. Cause yeah. it's always going to feel empty. Like, show me what you were proud to put there. Yeah, show yeah. me why you put something, you know, why you put this house here or, you know, why this creepy trees over here or whatever. Um, but yeah, uh, totally. Um, there's there'd probably be some sort of maybe a mini map in mine. I'm not sure yet, but I, it's navigation minimal. I don't want to be looking at maps. I want you to be able to show me where I should be, or show me with what you've created, like what will be advantageous or like what's interesting. Um, I shouldn't need to look at a map and read a town name and blah 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 uh okay and locomotion so movement ability movement abilities are they player based do you have some sort of animal um is there a service uh is it locked behind like are we talking like like metrovanias like you need to unlock your movement abilities to be able to get to different places um or can you just fucking start the game and fly? What's up? Um, mine, the game I'm doing to, now. You don't need to tell me about the game you're making. You can just yeah, say, I know, like, but here's it's what so, I wish. It's funny because just the things like if I didn't know a game I was making, the answers would be so different. Because I think that there, the, there's just an option that it's not used very often. Um, and that's you just walk around, man. <laughs> yeah. You have a yeah. sprint button, of course. Uh yeah, we'll definitely put in a sprint button. <laughs> I think I think we've all found that you you need one in, in these days for sure. Okay. So you just walk around. No horses necessary. No. Uh no. There may be something like that later on that you unlock, but for the most part you're just gonna be doing a lot a lot of ch- trudging. Trudging. That sounds fun. Everyone <laughs> go play dance trudging game. <laughs> trudging. It's called trudging. Uh <laughs> Just walking simulator 2020 it's a, <laughs> uh it's mostly walking through dig deep, deep snow uh and uh marsh level up your boots and there's no <laughs> g at the end it's just an apostrophe trudging it's Trudge. called trudging it's super fun man i don't know uh and dance commentary great. is over all of it and you can't <laughs> turn it off <laughs> You're just trudging, man. It's super realistic, though. You should see. <laughs> Dan gave up the comedy for this. <laughs> it's a you just you level up. Like the level up system is how high you can, your character can raise his needs. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like someone took Death Stranding and made it worse without yeah. monster sponsorship. But dude, you should see the water in this game. Like <laughs> it's gonna look so good. It's, it's been all the budget on water. It's going to shine right off your boots. Uh, Holy crap. It's just the beginning. It's a tutorial of Red Dead 2. Just <laughs> over and over and over. Just through the snow. That's all. Clint, <laughs> uh, what, what would you want to see? So I like... So obviously we play a lot of Dungeons & Dragons. And I like how travel in that works. Like obviously like... When you start out, your little trash heap group isn't going to be able to do anything. They can't, like, even afford horses. So, like, they're walking. And then eventually, yeah, if you want, you can buy horses or have a wagon. It makes getting around a lot easier. and You can carry more. And then eventually, if you get strong enough, powerful enough, and you have someone in your party that does, like, magic. So, like, if you have the skill, you buy into that skill tree, you can learn how to teleport. And you can... Either 
learn how to teleport by like getting runes and teleportation circles and someone has to have like set that up somewhere uh and then you can like buy the runes or like somehow earn the runes to that teleportation circle or if you get even more powerful you can like teleport to places like i think that i am thinking about going to my work and i have a piece of the stone from there so i can teleport there directly without issue or i don't have a piece of the stone there might be and something happens and there's a chance that i get put way off and i go to where i used to work instead of where i work now uh or like I don't, it's, I, you're trying to get me to go to your work, Neil, like, you tell me where it is, uh, and we kind of have an idea, you describe the room, there's like a, a pretty large chance that something's going to go wrong, uh, but you never know, we might get there, <laughs> like, so like, I like how that kind of works, uh, so like, kind of like, you earn the right to kind of fast travel and like teleporting around like i don't like the idea of like skyrim where you're just like oh yeah nope you've been there sure go back to it or whatever mm -hmm. i like either like you have specific places you can fast travel to or you have like the power to attempt to fast travel to places or whatever i don't know all right so we got a long-winded way of saying <laughs> user your own it. adventure slash portal <laughs> game. All right, <laughs> you might end up at work. You might end up at that stone's original quarry. Let's find out. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you have a place or a piece of like the place, then you always get there without issue. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, That's just D and D rules. So. <laughs> uh, by the way, unrelated. When you do, when you play D and D, do you guys do like? You need like an hour to channel this teleportation spell. Yeah, yeah. If there there are spells that take a long time to cast, a teleport okay. I think is like ten minutes or something. So like it's not a simple easy one. Okay. You have to like draw out a circle in order to teleport. So it's not like a. But the the higher level one is like a just like oh shit this is going poorly let's get out of here kind of like, like I do that okay. you just throw it down. But. Gotcha um all right um well that kind of tried that kind of my next thing was fast travel um mm -hmm. and is it available clinton basically just gave us a fast travel uh, his game is fast travel you might get there you might not there's gonna <laughs> no be no no. i'm saying that's like a later thing like if you yeah. become powerful enough to teleport around there's still a chance that it might go wrong and that's not even like necessarily what i would put in my game i'm just de <laughs> describing something i thought was yeah, interesting yeah. <laughs> Um, I think, I think you need it. Mine's definitely going to have it in some element. It mm. might not be as available as, uh, it has gotten in, in recent years, but I think, I think definitely you, you need some form of it. Yeah. Mine will definitely have some form of it as well. Or like extremely, even like really quick navigation, like some sort of flying mechanic or something is would like be born the hawk and jumping through stuff yeah even at a certain point you're like man i wish i was just there already uh, <laughs> yeah 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 for sure okay so that's a yes across the board um enemies mm -hmm. um are enemies scaled to your level or are they determined by the location you're at um i like where it's kind of a mix of both so like you have kind of like um I think, you know, you can have different instances as well, but I think that each, I like where when you go to an area, they have a hey, characters in this level are from 10 to 20 characters in this level are from 20 to 30, that kind of situation. Um, and then maybe they scale within that um, as you're going around. Uh, so, you know, once you hit level, above level 20, you're going to be overpowered for this area. But as you're going through 10 to 20, they kind of go along with you. To some extent. I always liked when there was a point in a game that you would hit where you're like, oh, okay, this is obviously somebody who is much higher level. I need to go back and do a couple of things. I think that that's always kind of, you got to ba balance because you don't want it to be so grindy that you constantly are hitting those and constantly needing to go back and just doing things for fun, but I, or for the need to level up. But I do like that a little bit of that. 
All right. So, yeah. I think I kind of agree with you. Um, yeah. Right. I absolutely agree with you. Um, I like, I like having number one. I like the risk and knowing I can go someplace that I might mm-hmm. get my ass kicked. Um, um, I also like knowing that there's, I like a developer saying like, I don't want you here early level. Like you need to learn mm-hmm. more about the game. Maybe there's story elements in here or something. Um, but I do like the option. Like, uh, like if I wanted to run around in there and fuck around, like let me do it, kick my yeah. ass, but let me do it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the bosses and like mini bosses and any like major villains or like fights or whatever should be scaled to like an appropriate level because I don't want to be able to do something too soon just because I cheesed it. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I was talking about this with someone the other day. I'm going to talk about D and D because that's the RPG yeah. that I play the most. Uh, but I was talking, telling someone, uh, like I like to throw monsters back at my players that they've fought before. Mm-hmm. So, like in my current campaign, they fought. Well, they didn't actually fight him, but they fought off a uh, mandrake, or no, not a mandrake, a cock. I don't remember whatever, whatever it was, some kind of mythical beast. They fought him off in like their first session. Uh, they didn't actually fight him, but they talked to him and chased him off. Like it would have been a really difficult fight for him at the time. But in my most recent session, I threw two of them at them just mm-hmm. as like a low level, like see, like this is how much you've grown, kind of thing. Right. Uh, and they just wiped the floor with him like in two rounds. Like it's not mm-hmm. wasn't ever supposed to be a challenge for him. Just more of a like, hey, look how. A far you come check. like yeah. look at look at like how more how much more powerful you are and i like mm-hmm. kind of like having that in a game so in like having scaling enemies that are always scaled to you just you kind of lose some of that kind of magic of like oh like these are like low level or whatever yeah. guys and i can just kind of hammer through them uh but in the same time i also don't like games that are like borderlands like here's the the grunts and the brutes or whatever and early on they're they're you kill them and then later they're just magically stronger ones like i find that kind of boring so like like there has to be like some variety of enemies too like not just like difficulty but in like form too yeah so that in crossbow there feels like they're yeah um, in Crossco, there's actually this great moment where towards the end of the game, you have to go back to the starting point and they like force you to walk through like one of the first areas. And one of, someone in your party even mentions like, ah, look, the hedgehogs that they're called hedgehogs. Oh, look, the hedgehogs. Remember how scary they were? And like now we could destroy them. Yeah. But then Crosscode, when it's done, they there's like a lot some end game content i i don't know i didn't i didn't like it that much but um you can do like a new game where everything's leveled up a, a touch and so i i do like that like hey i can go back through this world again where everything's now scaled to where i'm at now but coming back we were just crushing these these level 3 things to show us like look how different this is 30 yeah. hours later yeah so uh yeah look those are my touchstones um i i thought that would be enough to get the wheels turning um combat style you're not even gonna talk about that yeah well, i feel like that kind of goes with uh, yeah like hit your combat style I was just um, <laughs> so I really, there's I a lot had, of there's a lot of different combat, yeah, styles. And combat style and like progression system were two things that yeah i, I have here that we could talk about uh mine's turn-based Old school turn based. Of course it is. <laughs> uh, yeah. mine's definitely if if you if no one's guessed it, I'm gonna make a soul like <laughs> I it's it's definitely it's like definitely an action RPG. Action RPG <laughs> sword combat. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I the the games that I enjoy aren't necessarily turn-based as much as i love D, which is very mm-hmm. turn-based <laughs> yeah video games that i enjoy are not turn-based yeah uh, i'd much rather have kind of and i'm yeah i don't know it's yeah sure good job good words <laughs> <laughs> good job 
Yeah, my progression system is probably going to be kind of old school level up kind of way too. Oh, you can so. have a board. You're gonna Are you board. just making Pokemon, Dan? I think yes. Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I, I got a billion dollar idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Small, cute creatures, and we fight them. <laughs> yeah. It is very Pokemon like. I'll tell you that. Because <laughs> I'm tired of it being the only creature based <laughs> game. Good, damn it. <laughs> yeah, right? I'm tired of picking up Pokemon and going, this is too boring. <laughs> <laughs> you know what this needs? More, more urban fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, uh, yeah. Do you guys have any 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 questions? Um, I I thought that'd be enough to g- get us going. Yeah, I'm good. I'm I'm excited. I just want a game with a robust magic system. There you go. I feel like I've not come across that in a long time since like Oblivion. Yeah. Cool, oh, cool. Yeah, you could make your own spells in Oblivion. Yeah. That was dope. That, that was, was super so much dope. Fun. Right. Fire and ice. Why so many not? games. So many games took out the fun. <laughs> <laughs> like what happened to just being like, do it. Cause why not? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, that's, I think there's a lot of that missing these days. So honestly, sure. I think it's because everything needs to be multiplayer now, which means everything needs to be balanced. And that takes, or it has to be streamlined. Them. Like yeah. making a spell would be too confusing for people. Like, Okay, then they won't do it. Like, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, for sure. So, all right. Well, tune in next week to see what uh, what our pitches for our games are. Um, and then give us money to make them. <laughs> uh, but anyway, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, subscribe, comment, and email us at GameGoosePodcast at gmail.com. Uh, if you're listening to us, you can check us out on pit- Twitch at PartyFile Games. Um, if you are watching us, you can check us out on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Game Goose. So, uh, anything you want to say before we leave this week? It's you good to be stop, back. You stopped doing that, Dan. We're not asking that question anymore. We're just saying <laughs> bye. Bye. You made well one. Goodbye. It's over now, Neil. <laughs> good, good. It's bye. not over till I say it's over, Dan. <laughs> yeah, he hits the button. <laughs> Uh, make sure you guys check out uh, Duck Duck Dice. It's every other Monday currently. We just had a session last night, so it will be not next Monday, but the Monday after. Uh, that is, as I talked about all night, a... Ooh, I caught my pen. It is a d and <laughs> just like bounced it and went flying, but I caught it. Uh, it is a D&D actual play uh, podcast, and we stream it live here on Twitch uh, at 7.30 now, I believe, on Monday nights. So... Every other Monday. So check that out. Uh, on our off Mondays, we've been playing board games and the Tabletop Simulator, which has been a lot of fun. Uh, we've been playing Code Names. Uh, we recently found a Clue, a version of Clue, that has been a lot of fun. So we might try that out if we don't have too many people. Uh, so check us out next Monday around 7 for that, if you're interested. want to watch some people play board games. Nice. Um, yeah, so that's all. I hope you all have a good week. And we'll see you see you next week. Yee. Bye fam. <laughs>